Hi everybody, my name is Christina Grozik and I'm with the Going Um Collective and we are so excited that you are joining us here today for our summer, summer solstice rebirth relaunch event and we are absolutely thrilled and delighted and what I couldn't be more thrilled and delighted for is that two of my favorite people are here with me. So we've got Nancy and Jim Pettit from the Gong Chamber and also the Memphis Drum Shop. And you guys, thank you so much for taking the time out to celebrate and be here with us today. It really means a lot. Thank you, Christina, for allowing us to be a part of it. We're so excited. Well, thank you. So, you know, I've, I've told many people that I've talked to and I've taught like workshops on sound and things like that or vibration. Any Anytime anything about a gong or singing bowl comes up, you guys usually come up with that, right? So I've told everyone I know. And anybody out there that has not yet experienced the Memphis Gong Chamber, I would highly encourage them to do so. But there might be people saying, well, I don't even know what a gong chamber is. What is a gong chamber? So can you guys tell us a little bit about what that is? Sure. And first of all, our son's birthday is June 21. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. What's his name? <laughs> James. James. Happy birthday, James. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the Memphis Gong Chamber is a couple of chambers, actually. There's a main chamber that has uh, just Paiste gongs in it. And then there's another chamber that has uh, gongs, other gongs from around the world, Chinese gongs and other German gongs as well. And it's a place where people come and uh, Nancy gives sound journeys and also where people come and uh, make their gong selection. It's also a gong showroom where people can come and, you know, select their different gong. And that's a fantastic way to do it. Um, of course, in person, we have a, another way that you can buy a gong called mygong.com, where I actually record in high def video and audio at the gong and if you select that gong to purchase, the gong you see in the video is the gong you get. So that's one way. And if you can't travel to the Memphis Gong Chamber, but of course the ultimate is to be in, in the Gong Chamber and select. So that's everything we do here and it's a lot of fun. Well, I'll tell you, I, I have experienced the Memphis Gong Chamber when I was in Memphis with you guys and what an absolute treat that was. I mean, just, a multi-sensory treat so you know it's the visual aspect you walk in and it's like something you would see out of like i don't know like lord of the rings or some magical movie where it's like you enter this other world and then the sounds and just the atmosphere that you guys both create just the energetic value of it it's like you are literally crossing over into this other world and it's absolutely spectacular and brilliant so but you had mentioned sound journey jim so you guys what is a sound journey for those of our guests that aren't familiar with that term um, i guess i will take that one um the sound journey is a a form of meditation where people are brought into the chamber they are asked to either lie down sit in a zero gravity chair to settle in settle down get comfortable close their eyes and then it's a journey inward with sound that they not only hear but they feel through every cell of their body with the waves of vibrations that just whether it's from the bowls or from the gongs that just flow over and through them, uh, massaging every single part of your body. Uh, it's just, it's, it's relaxing, it's calming, it's comforting. It, it's truly an amazing experience and it can't be described to really understand it. One has to experience it. I love how you just I love how you just illustrated that because it's so true. You can tell somebody about something, but until they've actually experienced it, it's really hard to put it into words. So I've had a lot of people ask, you know, because I also do sound journeys and I've had a lot of people say, well, what do I need to do to prepare? Like, what do I have to wear? Do I have to eat something specific? And really, I tell people, you know what? 
Just come, and your job is to just be and breathe. Just be and exactly. breathe. Exactly, exactly. The main thing, just be in the present moment. Uh, dress comfortably, come prepared to relax. If you have questions, ask before we come in. And then once we get into the chamber, just allow yourself to listen. Um, and I do usually, before we come into the chamber, uh, we meet in our conference room and I go over a few things with them, just meet and greet. I try to assess their state because especially in a group sound bath, everyone is coming from a different state of being, uh, mentally, emotionally, physically. They bring to the sound journey their experiences, not just the past day, the past life. They bring all of that with them as they come. You know, everything that's happened to them up to that point comes in with them. So some will come in in a depleted, exhausted state, um, looking for rejuvenation. And in the same group, I'll have someone that perhaps is overly excited, agitated, and needs to be calmed down. So I just, I try to assess that before we go in. And then I try to start out and I try to bring those who need to be brought up up and those who need to be brought down down and we, we try to meet so starting calmly and building up to a state and then letting that intensity build to reach those up here to help bring them down um and just you know again just come and listen don't try to analyze the sounds that ruins the effect just listen let let the tones let the vibrations come in and then release without judgment and just assess when it's over, what happened? <laughs> you know, how do I feel now compared to how I felt when I came in? Yeah, and I don't know, I think you guys could probably speak on this too, but it's, it's so incredible when you see somebody come in and I love that you guys do that assessment beforehand because it's really an energetic exchange. It's like all about energy, right? So I love that you guys do that. And when you see somebody or you see a group people so this can either be an individual experience or a group experience as you had mentioned right. and when you see somebody they look very different usually after the session like a totally different person even though they're the same you know yes exterior from the exterior but they still look so different at least to me you know and, and it was also very interesting to watch you as she was describing the sound journey earlier you should have seen your face in the way you just, you were going on the journey right then. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> well, she, she has been on the journey, so she understands. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it's funny because when you recall things, you know, there's the whole memory dynamic to sound and it's, you know, it just stays with us. So maybe you, you picked up, Jim, on, I was recalling that. Yes. Oh, you, know? it, you could, I could see it. I could see it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I mean, what a magical experience for me, for sure. So every time, right? So going into these different journeys, you had mentioned that you play the gongs and some singing bowls. So I guess how, how does like, is, are we playing a gong? Are we playing like lows and highs? Are we playing different different tones, different sounds, things of that nature. Like what are some of the tools that you guys incorporate into it? Uh, well, I usually start with the, as, as they're coming in and they're getting settled into the chairs, um, I'm trying to calm everyone down and assure them, you know, that this is going to be a wonderful journey to take your seats. So, and I'm walking around them, usually with the Zaffir chime, just play very slowly around the room. Uh, hitting each corner and going by each chair. And then as they lie down, going over them and just helping them. And I've had some wonderful responses from that. Uh, the, the chimes are, it's, they're magical. And they seem to create a wonderful memory for everyone who hears them. Uh, you know, I've uh, heard things like they felt like fairies were just all in the room, going tiptoeing around them. Uh, they have images of that. They have images of uh, uh, wonderful childhood memories of uh, 
that particular sound, whether with a, a music box or something that they remember that was very dear to them as a child. But that seems to calm everyone, get everyone ready for the next element of it. And I also incorporate silence into the sound journey. I think it's such an important part. It allows them to reflect on the sounds that they heard. So between each one, I start with the chimes and then I give them a minute or two of silence before I go to the singing bowls. And I usually start with a higher note and go down. I do a body scan and help them to relax each part of the body. So I start with the higher tones and the crown and then progress down through the body with the lower tones and then play the bowls um, by having them sing for a minute or two and then more silence. And then I go to the gongs and I never know exactly what I'm going to do. Again, I try to draw from the, the participants, the clients in the room, uh, what they need. But I usually start, we have uh, an 80 inch, which is actually an 84 at the front of the room. And I usually just begin to prime it and pull it up to a low hum, a low drone, and just let it do its thing, you know, for a, a minute or two. And then I just begin to play it. And then I'll go begin to go around the room. I am so fortunate to be allowed to play these amazing instruments in this gong chamber. Um, on either side of the 80, I have two 60s. I have a 60 symphonic and a sound creation. And then I have a 60 microphony, a 50 symphonic, a 40 symphonic. And then I have several planetary gongs in there. I have a sun, earth, the moons, Venus, a platonic year, it just, and I play all of them. Um, those, um, this, these surround the room, the entire wall, either on the wall or stands of the gong chamber. And the people are in the middle in their zero gravity chairs. So I like to think of it as a, a cocoon of vibration and sound, just completely surround sound. And after I get started, they tell me later that they couldn't tell where I was, where the sounds were. They just knew they were transported <laughs> with the sounds, with the vibrations to another place. So, yeah, I play the chimes. I play the singing bowls. I also play bronze bowls when I finish with the gongs. Then I play the bronze bowls to sort of bring it back down. And then I usually will do the rubbing mallets to sort of release some of this or perhaps a shaker and then more silence. And then I, to let them know that it's over, I end with the Zapper Chimes again to sort of to bring it to closure. And I love, I love that you had mentioned the silence part and that you allow for that time because I think it's so important to allow silence for everything just to kind of settle, right? So you can take it in fully. And I know it's, it's, so crazy like when i talk to people and you know I, I mentioned to them like you know in my journey in my personal journey trying to find that meditative state that everyone was telling me i needed to find right i wasn't able to find it by just sitting and trying to be silent i found it through sound so i found the silence through the sound you know so the fact that you're allowing those gaps and those moments for people to truly just absorb and take it in is so powerful and then after that they're telling you they didn't even know where you were in the room and what was happening it's like this sea and this wave of sound coming through them right like a um a sound massage like inside oh it is it is in fact with the breathing exercise that's what i tell them to do not only with the breath to invite the breath in to invite light in with that breath to let it let the light go in and open up their heart so they can receive all this and then just let the breath the light the sound act as um a masseuse massaging each part and especially any part that they might have noticed is holding extra tension or holding pain in it to uh massage it spend time on that and then assess when it's over, how does that part feel now? Can you tell any difference? 
does it feel better? And uh, most of the time it does. That's awesome. That is so awesome. And have you had like any, whether it's your own or maybe it's a participant, like giving you some feedback, any experiences that really stand out? Oh, I definitely. We, we both have. Jim has had several clients. You want to start with yours? And well, many, uh, many. And again, I, I'm not the healer. Uh, I'm, I'm just a gong player. I love sound. Uh, she's she's the healer. Yeah, you know, I tell people that when we when dogs meet us, uh, they wag their tail and lick her hand and they growl at me. You know, so <laughs> that, 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 that's the difference. But uh, but um, I, I love gong sounds and I love to see. I, what I really like to do is connect the gong to the person that's going to play it, and she connects the gongs to the people. But I like to connect the, the, the gong that the person is going to buy or going to be paired up with. And that's what, I, that's what I really love to do. It was funny. I had a lady just last week. She and her husband came in. They just walked in the door and they, she said, I, I know you think I'm crazy, but I woke up and yesterday and I said, I want a gong. And I said, yes, you're crazy. And that's about the 1500th time someone has said that <laughs> exact word to me, you know, so it's, it's not crazy. And so she came in and she said, I know. And she literally knew absolutely nothing about a gong. She'd never, I don't know if she'd even seen one. I think she saw one in a yoga class, but you know, she had no experience in knowing about them. So I brought her in and just exposed her a little bit, but I said, you go back and you go to my website and you study all my videos that are on there for the My Gong videos. And that will give you a sense of, of, you know, of what size and what type you like. And she said, okay. And then I said, and then when you get ready, then call me and you can come back and, and we can do a final selection. Since she is local, that worked out great. So she called me this morning and she says, okay, I'm ready. She says, I think I want to, I want to listen to Saturn and I want to listen to Platonic Year and 32 simple blah, 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 blah. And I said, okay, we can do that. And I said, oh, by the way, uh, do you feel, have you noticed you feel better since you came last week? She says, how did you know that? <laughs> I said, because when you came in to meet me first, you had a frown on your face and you were puzzled and you were confused and you didn't know. But when you left, you were smiling. And I can tell you're smiling over the phone and that you feel better. And she says, I do. <laughs> so it just happens like that. And uh, another great story is uh, Rick Young, who was a senior vice president of Yamaha Corporation, who, you know, there's nothing woo-woo about this guy. I mean, you know, he's a high-level corporate guy. So he comes in and, and again, I never know the backstory on these people, but he wanted to see the gong chain. So I came in, just a brief visit, played briefly for him. And he, great, thank you, enjoyed it. He left, he wrote me a note, an email the next day. He says, I just want to tell you, he says, Mike, two weeks ago, I just really pulled my muscles in my back and I've been in pain and, you know, and I couldn't even hardly get in and out of the car. And he said, but when you played the gong, I noticed it felt like a, you, someone poured a bucket of cool water over my shoulders and down my back. And, and, and he had the greatest sound bite. He said, Advil didn't help, but the gongs did. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've had a lot of people tell me a lot of things. And, and again, that's what they do. And that's wonderful. But um, I just like to play the gong and match them up with it. Yeah, and it is. I mean, that's so valuable to have a guide because it is such a personal experience that, you know, um, anytime someone has said like, well, you know, I think I'm just going to order one. And it's like, no, get to know it, like get to know it because you need to resonate with one another. You know, it's like, it's, yes. a, it's a partnership. You're working together yes. as a team. So to have somebody that can be on the ground helping to make that match, right? Almost like a dating app or service. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Match, you know, right. 
Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, those are wonderful stories. Those are really great. And I and it's always the smile, the big smile that gives it away. I can always tell the one they like and the one they're going to choose. Oh, that's awesome. That is so that that would be really cool to document, you know, just that that journey. Right. That's so yes. cool. And like you had mentioned, um, the gentleman from Yamaha, not a woo guy. And I mean, when you break it down, yeah, maybe so it's like this, you know, uh, glowing golden globe or whatever it looks like. But really what we're talking about at the end of the day is energy. And that's not woo, it's energy, right? It's right. science at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are great. I love that. And I do, I love the smiles that it brings and just the lightness that it brings to the world on so many different levels. Yeah, thank yes. you for sharing that. And Nancy, you had mm -hmm. some experiences as well. I, I did. In fact, when I knew that we were going to do this, I said, I've had some beautiful testimonials over the years. And I had looked through them, but I'm like, Jim, it's just God works in such wonderful, mysterious ways. Just today, this morning, in my inbox, uh, I received a letter, a long letter, from um, a woman who was driving from Los Angeles to see her mother in Chicago. And she had heard about the sound journey. So she had made a reservation to have a private session and uh, we did. And she just had this wonderful experience. And when she left, I mean, it was almost like she was walking on air. It just, she was just so much lighter and just, it was amazing. But that night, and this was, I guess, maybe two months ago, that night, she wrote me and said, I have to tell you what happened to me as I left the gong chamber in Memphis Drum Shop. She said, as I walked back down the, the street to my car, she said, I'm not accustomed to people waving and smiling at me, but she said, everyone I met just, they were almost staring at me and just, they were just so friendly and nice. And she said, there were two or three cars that went by that waved. And she said, I couldn't figure it out. And she said, I got in the car and I looked in the mirror. And she said, I was just glowing. <laughs> she said, they had to see that. And so she went to see her mother and she stayed two weeks and she contacted me on the return trip. And she said, I have to have another private session. Can you fit me in? So I did. And she told me more about her experience and how she went home and, and the entire family recognized this difference in her. And she said, it was just like I had love and gratitude and um, compassion, kindness, just oozing from it because she said it was infectious. It just, and I said, well, you know, the law of attraction, it was just, she was magnetic. So we did another session and she said, I will write you when I get home. Well, that was at least two or three weeks ago. And this morning I got the letter and she said, I cannot begin to tell you how my life has just, it's been upward ever since I was there. And she said, what I didn't tell you that was that I had been going through something quite troubling and I had this blockage, this energy blockage that was just depleting me of my life force. And she said, it's back. And she said, I kept, the, the reason I've waited so long to ride is that I thought it would begin to ebb and I was going to call and say, you know, I want to come back when can we do this again? But she said, I realized that I might not ever write because she said, it's only growing. It's not diminishing. And she said, so I had to write and tell you. So I have to write her tonight to tell her, to tell her that was so timely uh, because I did share her story. And then at lunch today, I ran into another client who hasn't been in several months. And she said, oh, I'm so glad to see you. I have to make another appointment. The last time I was in for a session and I went home, she said, I walked in the door. My husband said, I have never seen you look so relaxed, so radiant. <laughs> So I said, okay, let's get you back. <laughs> yeah. So there, it, it's, it is truly a powerful experience, long lasting. There is, 
that memory that you take with you. And, and I do, when they leave, I try to encourage them to take it with them. Remember the breath, that we, the in-breath and out-breath, the calming. Remember the sensation that you felt. Bring it back. Hold on to it. And then share that with others. Yeah, I, I love that because everyone has that breath that they can tap into when they need it. So they may not have the gongs, right? But they have their breath, you know? Mm -hmm. And like you had spoke about, you know, she all of a sudden she was radiant. People were saying hello and waving, at, you know, to her from their cars. And it's like raising that vibration. It's, it's an energy right. vibration and raising that up and drawing it. And it's like, um, kind of equated to almost like uh, if you're familiar with Karelian photography where they will photograph food and they mm -hmm. photograph like whole foods versus like canned foods and processed foods and the whole foods are like beaming and they have all this like the energetic value around them and you can see like a glow to it and then the processed food it's like there's nothing there <laughs> or like then you eat this one and you feel like wow you know charged and maybe you eat something like super processed and all of a sudden oh, you're feeling a little sluggish later you know because it's helping to drop that vibration or raise that vibration and it's it's a real thing you know but to have someone experience that and share that with you is so magical and so valuable you, know, you want another story? Is. You want another story? Sure, yes. Do you, do you have time? <laughs> you have time. We have time, yes. <laughs> yes. Now, this was uh, several years ago. One of our employees' mom came to see him. She'd never been to Memphis, gone, never been to Memphis, actually. And she'd never been to the shop. So uh, she would just visit him. And he asked me, he said, hey, would you take my mom in the gong chamber to show her? I said, sure. So I would take her in and I can always usually tell when a person comes in that, that it really affects. Um, it, it's really pretty amazing. You can really sense that person sensing the gongs. And so she comes in and I'm watching, you know, so I just play for just, a, I mean, really a couple of minutes. And I said, are you okay? She says, yes. And everything's fine. And she says, and I said, well, great. I said, well, it was so nice to meet you and please have fun visiting with your son and please come back and visit us again. And we left the chamber and I go to my office. Well, uh, she visited with the son about another hour or two and then she comes to the office before she leaves and she says, I wanna tell you what I saw. And I went, okay, sure. She said, I saw this white out blizzard and there was a black train at an angle coming out of the blizzard. And I said, that is so wonderful. That's great. I said, it was nice to meet you. And I hope you enjoyed your visit. And please come back and see us. I didn't say, no, you didn't. How did you, what do you mean? You know, I said, sure. But I didn't know the backstory again. So the next day, her son comes in. He says, Mr. Pettit, I want to tell you, thanks for taking my mom in the gong chamber. He said, you don't know this, he said, but um, this has been the worst year of her life. Um, her husband, my father, divorced her. She lost her job. She had to move. And he said, and yesterday, when you played the gong for her, that's the first time I've seen her smile in a year. Okay. So that's all you can do. I hope you enjoyed it, but great. And you go to the next one and see how that affects you. Yeah. I can see it. <laughs> <They cry. laughs> they yeah. Yeah, because it, it, it's so we've had a, we've had several of, the, of those. Yeah, well you gave her several a really those. wonderful gift, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, not me. No, not me. Well, not me holding the space and being the vehicle for it right so yeah i mean holding the space and being the vehicle for it because <laughs> no she's the gift it's the, <laughs> both, of you, it's, both of you truly yeah. because i think we you know I, I i don't think any of us here are saying well i am doing this you're the vehicle for it the and vehicle. you're holding the space and jim to your credit i mean if you would have said because i mean people do share experiences they have 
And if you would have been the person that said, well, no, you didn't. That doesn't even make sense. I'm sorry. You did not see that. <laughs> or, you know, if you like shut that down, then that could have caused her to kind of question her experience. And then it would have taken that openness in that space that she just created for herself in that moment through the vehicle of your playing. Right. And yes. it could have just closed that right back down and not only closed it down, but it could, could have closed it down with, an extra weight to it because now she's she was vulnerable she was open she was wanting to share and because you held space for her in that moment allowing her to share that allowed her to lift part of the layers right so i appreciate you being so humble <laughs> but <laughs> holding the space and holding the space is part of part of the work right so yeah. yeah but yeah thank you for sharing that and i still feel like this eye is like water <laughs> so, yeah. so we're talking about space so it is holding space for others during this work right so in that theme is there anything that because i i've seen people just jump in and start playing right mm -hmm. i personally have to take a moment um to prepare and just come into a certain mindset and ground. Is there anything that you guys do to prepare in advance right before you go into a session? Well, when I'm taking groups in that are, and some maybe have never been exposed to the gong, I just pause for a moment and I say, no, let's just stop for a second. And a lot of times they're, they're thinking, you know, bang, bang, gong show or something, you know, bang or gong. And I said, and it's going to be different on the other side of this door, you know, so let's just think about it. And I said, let's be a little reverent in here. And I just calm them down. And then we go in. And of course, the first thing they all say is, wow. You know, and it is so amazing. And then I tell them later, I say, it's so funny on the other side of the chamber door, it's all giggly and funny and happy. You know, I mean, they're just laughing, don't know, whatever. I said, when they come out, they're like, wow. It's a different thing. It's a different feeling. <laughs> So we, it's good, and she does the same thing, uh, much more in depth, preparing for the sound journey. Yeah, yeah. I actually go into the chamber and prepare it, um, make sure it's clean, which it always is, but just clear the space uh, energetically, uh, either with chimes, tinctures, bells, shakers, hand drum, and just I try to be in the space you know, uh, reacquaint myself with the gongs and I know them pretty well. I, I love them. They are my family, <laughs> but just reacquaint myself with them. I usually go around and I prime them before, you know, I bring the people in and I always do an invocation. As you said, you know, it is not us. We are simply the channel, the vehicle. It's for me, it's, it's God because I hear God's voice coming through the gongs. It just touches my heart each time that I play. And I just, I, I do an invocation. I ask that he remove my pride, ego, and just fill me with his radiant light and let his love envelop those who are going to share in this space and let them in that, which is always my thing, that they find the light, embrace it, and then in that light, find the love, joy, hope, peace, compassion, kindness, and that they not only feel it, but they go out and they share it with each person that they encounter, because we're all on this journey, each one of us, whether it's in the sound journey itself, but then we are also on this personal journey of life, and we meet so many people on that journey and it just takes a, a smile a kind word a loving look no judgment acceptance and each person then can pass it on to the next person and if we all would just do that it would be so much better uh place to live yeah oh amen i could not agree with you more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um... You know, sometimes that is, you never know what someone is going through. You never know where they're at. Um, it's always really interesting because even even when people seem like, oh, everything's so great, 
you never know you never know what battle someone is going through and what they're working on and not too long ago um i had a client tell me that someone they had shared a story with me that someone was really unkind to them and you know they were telling me about it and i just i looked at them and i said you do realize that this has nothing to do with you right <laughs> this has nothing this has nothing to do with you that person anyone that would treat somebody in that manner is going through some stuff themselves mm -hmm. and it was just them taking it out on you but it has nothing to do with you so anyone that's going to come from a place and treat somebody in an unkind fashion is is working on stuff right, right. so well, yeah wish. how great to raise the collective consciousness and invite light and love into the world right and it all mm -hmm. starts with each of us and just right. that smile like you had indicated can be all the difference in the world. Um, so let me ask you guys, we're talking about sounds. So what are some of your personal favorite sounds? What are some sounds that when you hear them, it's like, ah, all is right in the world. Mm -hmm. All is right in the world. And it can be, it can be anything from like, it can be an instrument, it can be a nature sound, it could be a person, whatever it is for you. You want me to start? <laughs> no, I'm just saying her sound. Um, you know, you know, you can tell like when she's talking today, and that's the way. And the and the gongs in here love her. Again, they're 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 okay with they're they don't mind me being in here, but the gongs <laughs> love her. You know, and, and they perform so sweetly for her. And when she plays the gongs, that's the sound I love to hear. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I love the sound of his voice, <laughs> his laughter. Um, everything about him. Um, I love his playing. He plays not only the gongs, but he plays drums uh, very well uh, in many different bands, all kinds of music. I love to hear him play. Um, I love the sounds of nature. Um, I love, I grew up in a house with a tin roof. And one of my favorite memories is lying in bed at night, listening to the rain on that tin roof. That to me, it's just one of the most calming sounds around. I love the sound of the ocean, um, the tide, uh, just the wind, everything. Yeah, just and and that's one thing I've always loved sounds, but it was really only after we opened the gong chamber and brought the gongs in, and I really started to play them and play the bowls and just began to devour books and, and courses, workshops on uh, sound that I began to really listen. And it is amazing what we can hear when we listen just to everyday sounds um, around us, you know, when you isolate them and uh, truly appreciate them. Uh, incorporate them into uh, your life. It's just sound is truly wonderful and it can change the world. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And yeah, it's such a teacher. Like, you know, the sounds of nature for me especially have been such a teacher, but I love that your sounds resonate with one another. And then, you know, you guys shared that sound, whether it's individually or combined with others so and i think that's so such a special and dynamic gift for sure so yeah it's it's amazing and i love that you talked about listening too because there is um there's a composer he's based out of well he's from germany he splits his time between germany france and new york and um he actually takes and transcribes to train his ear he takes nature sounds like animal sounds like the song of birds the howl of wolves the sound of the whale right and he will take recordings of those and he trains his ear by listening to it and converting it into sheet music so alexander lieberman is his name and i love i asked him because i talked to him of course i saw the videos and i'm like i need to ask him why he does this <laughs> you know so I reached out i found him and uh yeah i said why why what what compels you to do this? I mean, I love that you're doing it, but can I ask you the reason? And he's like, yeah, I'm training my ear. I'm a composer. I need to know how to listen. 
And I thought, gosh, what a valuable tool for all of us to take note of is learning how to listen because it's such a good teacher in so many ways, right? So, yeah. And um, for those of you that didn't know, um, Jim is a drummer, right? And we had just talked about that. That was just mentioned. And the Memphis Gong Shop is inside of the Memphis Drum Shop, which is equally awesome. So <laughs> if you're in Memphis, that's that's the place you want to go. All, all kinds of magic is there. So um, where do you guys think sound will go in the future? How do you think sound will be used in the future? Well, boy, that's a big question. You know, sound continues to evolve. Uh, you know, if we don't count Alexa and some of those other things, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> But uh, I think we will just continue to use uh, the sound of our voice, uh, the sound of the gong, the sound of any vibrating membrane to just enhance our lives to continue that way. And Nancy, did you want to add anything to that or? Yeah, no, I'm in total agreement with him. I'm just looking forward to seeing <laughs> where that's going to take us. You know, things are changing and developing so rapidly that I think it's limitless what can happen. Yeah, here, here is to what's ahead, right? And we'll stay yeah. in the present moment until then. But <laughs> um, is there anything you guys would like to add? No. Just thank you again for allowing us to be a part of this wonderful movement that uh, you are involved in, the, the relaunching of the site. And uh, as you said, uh, Summer Solstice is a special day for us because it is our son's birthday. <laughs> well, you guys, thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of it. It means more to me than I could probably express in words properly. And James, happy birthday. We are also <laughs> today. So it is a traditional celebration, yeah. Um, and where can people find you guys? If they wanted to find more information, where would they do that? Well, uh, our site is www.memphisdrumshop.com. And there you can find all the drum shop stuff, but also the gongs are on there as well. And uh, if they want to come to the Sound of Journey, they just go to the website and they click on events and it takes them right to uh, my page and uh, the available sessions gives a brief description of uh, what they can expect. Awesome. Yeah, and a special treat, you guys, coming up right after this, there is a premiere of a video that you did, a really special sound healing journey. So, yes, you don't want to miss that. So, oh, thank you, thank you guys. I hope to see you sooner than later, but um, really appreciate your time, your energy, all the gifts that you share and your presence. So, thank you. Thank you, Christina. We Thank love you. you and we love what you do. <laughs> oh, great back to you. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank I'll you. See you guys soon. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you.